Before you can answer the question, how do the kidneys help regulate my blood pressure? First, you need to be able to answer the question, what is the relationship between blood volume and blood pressure? Meaning, if my blood volume goes up or down, how does that affect my blood pressure? So, if my blood volume goes up, my blood pressure is going to go up. And it's as simple as, if you have more water in the pipes, the pipes are going to have more pressure. And then on that same thought process, I want you to think, if my blood pressure is low, as a response, am I going to want to vasoconstrict or vasodilate? So first, does constrict mean bigger or smaller? Constrict means your vessels are getting smaller. Dilate means they're getting larger. If you want to raise the pressure in the pipes, do you want bigger pipes or smaller pipes? So you want smaller pipes because think about it, if you have the same volume of water in a smaller pipe, you're gonna have higher pressure in that pipe. So there are two ways that the kidneys help regulate blood pressure. There is the direct renal mechanism. So what is happening here is your blood pressure is going down And just because your blood pressure went down, that means you're going to filter less. Just imagine like you have a, any kind of filter, like a coffee filter, the more pressure um, of the water, the more pressure placed upon the water going through the filter, the faster you're going to filter. If there's less pressure behind the water, you're not gonna filter as fast. Now your kidneys have a lot of ways, like your kidneys are trying to always filter at the same rate but if you get low enough, they cannot maintain that. Um, so even though you don't know about the urinary system yet, probably, when you have less filtration, that means you're gonna have less urine formation, which is gonna prevent a further loss of fluid. And over time, like so long as you're drinking, that is gonna help raise your blood volume and therefore your blood pressure. So that is the direct renal mechanism because it's just, this is all just the result of physical forces. The other way, if one way is the direct renal mechanism, the other method is going to be the indirect renal mechanism. So What's happening here is, once again, your arterial pressure is going down. Um, the kidneys are capable of sensing this drop in blood pressure. So a baroreceptor, um, baro is pressure, like a barometer in weather senses the air pressure. A baroreceptor in your body senses the pressure within your blood vessels. So there's just little um, areas of blood vessels that are capable of detecting pressure. So your kidneys sense this drop in blood pressure. Um, and as a result, renin is released. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of ignore this part. Just know that renin is released, a cascade of events happens. At the end of the day, we get angiotensin II, which is ultimately what we were looking to do because it's gonna cause these other things. So the angiotensin II has four effects which are gonna help you increase your blood pressure. The one of the things it's gonna do is make you thirsty so that you drink, because if you're drinking more, you're gonna raise your blood volume. It's also a very potent vasoconstrictor. 
because like we said, vasoconstricting smaller pipes is going to directly raise your blood pressure. Now, ADH is a hormone from the posterior pituitary. If you go to the school where I work, uh, we do heart and then endocrine. So this is like a little bit of a preview about the kind of stuff you're gonna learn in endocrine. But ADH is a hormone released by the posterior pituitary gland. It can be released for a couple reasons. One of the reasons it will be released is due to um, angiotensin II. So ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. A diuretic uh, would be a drug that makes you urinate. So antidiuretic hormone, you can think of it as anti-peeing hormone. So ADH causes you to urinate less because it causes your kidneys to reabsorb more water. When your kidneys reabsorb things, that means they're putting it back into the bloodstream instead of letting you pee it out. So we pee less um, combined with the drinking that's gonna increase our blood volume, increase our pressure. The other hormone uh, comes from the adrenal gland and that hormone is aldosterone. So aldosterone causes the kidneys to reabsorb more sodium. If you reabsorb more sodium, remember water will move via osmosis to a place where there's a higher concentration. Um, the water is going to follow the salt. So automatically, if you increase your sodium reabsorption, the water will follow it. And once again, we raise our blood pressure. So now I want to go backwards to the pathway to talk about this and the reason that I want to talk about it is like this is important if you want to go into nursing or some other health field we're going to be dealing with medication. So um, going renin to angiotensin 2, we have our renin is released by the kidneys. The renin is going to react with the angiotensinogen, which is a plasma protein produced by the liver, and it's going to cause angiotensinogen to become angiotensin 1. Take a second to note like the endings of this, angiotensinogen into angiotensin. Remember we've seen before fibrinogen when you're making a blood clot turns into fibrin. So you're seeing the same pattern of O-gen to I-N. Because the O-gen is always the inactive form of something, and it's typically going to activate it into something of the same name that ends in I-N. So angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. The angiotensin 1 is then converted into angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme from the lungs. Remember, an enzyme is something that catalyzes a reaction. Um, so the ACE is necessary to catalyze the reaction from angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. The reason I'm telling you this is because there's a class of drugs called ACE inhibitors. Um, if you're taking an ACE inhibitor, what is the result going to be for your blood pressure? So if you're taking an ACE inhibitor, basically like you're stopping this entire pathway from happening. Um, so you're stopping your mean arterial pressure from going up. So you would take an ACE inhibitor if you had high blood pressure. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. 
I hope you learned something. Have a great day and have fun learning.